Super Mario. Do you know who he is? You know, he's in the games, he's in the, the, the stores, he can be a plushie, there's coloring books, there's a movie from like the 90s. He's been everywhere. So I'm not gonna talk about the history of this guy. You know who he is. Today, we're gonna talk about the movie. And no, not the one that I previously mentioned. I'm talking about a movie that's actually worth something, you know, a good movie. It's a Super Mario movie. I think by now it came out about a week ago. It was Wednesday, April 5th that it came out, and I got to see it that Friday, April 7th, and then I saw it again on the 8th, the Saturday. And I have some very, very strong opinions of the movie. Mostly good. Mostly good. I will just flat out say mostly good i love the movie i thought it was a phenomenal video game adaptation we've gotten quite a few of those recently with like sonic and the last of us now with mario it's very nice illumination really did a good job with this one before i get into this i just want to talk about the movie without spoilers after this section there's like 30 second little bit i'm gonna go into spoiler territory so i'll warn you about that but Overall, I'd give the movie a good, like, 85 out of 100, like an 85% if you were going Rotten Tomatoes. Well, if you're just a casual viewer, I'd say it's a 75 to an 80. And then if you're a hardcore Mario Nintendo fan, it's definitely, like, in the 90s of, like, if we're going Rotten Tomato-wise. The 55 or whatever that they gave them, the, this that they gave this movie on Rotten Tomatoes, that's just critics being dicks for no reason. Um... So don't, don't pay attention to that. The audience score is very telling, um, but we already know this. So if you want to see it, you want to have a good time, go watch the movie. It's really, it's just a fun movie. It's not a thinker. It hasn't got this crazy, complicated plot or storyline. It's just a fun movie. So I would recommend you go see it if you're even remotely interested. Uh, definitely go see it before watching this video. I don't want to ruin it for you. I don't. This is, it was, it was a really fun movie and I'm definitely going to go see it again. So now I'm going to get into the spoiler stuff. Do with that information what you will. But if you haven't seen the movie, please leave for your own sake. If you have seen the movie, stick around. I want to talk about the things that I loved. That I loved. I'm going to talk about the things that I didn't like. Um, which is a pretty short list and then I'm gonna talk about some of the critic reviews that I think are stupid because I think they're funny I think they're really really funny. So what did I like? I think the thing that I love the most about the movie was the visual style everyone knows illumination They got the minions. They got the secret life of pets. They got a despicable me and sing all of those movies look relatively the same. I think that the colors are flat, the character models are really similar, and their animations are usually pretty basic. Everybody, everybody knows the Illumination style, but I feel like because Nintendo was breathing down the necks of the Illumination animators and executives, the Illumination wanted to make this one something special. And like I said, that's in part probably because they were partnered with someone instead of this being a solo project for them. I just want to say the colors are phenomenal. The movie is very vibrant. There were no really dull moments in the movie. Maybe the, the dullest part of the movie took place earlier on. Did I mention I'm going to get into spoilers? I'm going to get into spoilers. The only dull moments color wise, not even, they weren't even that dull. It was like, the, it was Brooklyn, you know, Brooklyn looks like a city, but even then it was nice and colorful. It wasn't flat and gray, like a lot of illumination stuff. And you could just tell the love and care that they were putting into every little detail. You had like really small things like picture frames of punch out characters and the duck hunt duck as like a storefront sign. You had Jumpman uh, arcade game in the back. There was a lot of little things here and there that I really appreciated. And the visual style did a good job at just looking nice and being beautiful. You know, that's what I like to see in my animated movies. I don't know about you guys. I like Puss in Boots, like their style. I like spider versus style. This movie is a little more basic illumination style, but it's different. It's still a very nice movie to look at. And that kind of segues into all the little, little references here and there that I really, really liked, both visually and in the music. Uh, I, I just, I loved that you could tell that this movie was made with a lot of love and care, like the animators, the modelers, the storytellers, because if a m video game movie is just made because of the IP, you get, you get movies like the original Doom movie, or you get like Warcraft. I don't know if that one was good or not. I just know that it exists. Uh, you get Halo, especially that one, the most recent, I think flop for video game movies. You get that stuff. When the people who are making the movie aren't fans, they aren't invested, they don't know a lot. They kind of just use the name, the IP, to bring in their viewers, bring in their money, without putting any care into the movie. And, and you can tell that th that's not the case here. That is 
far from it the, all of the main characters look phenomenal they all they don't look like they do in the games which is perfect because the ones in the games are pretty basic and they got that a little bit of an illumination style to them but it works very well it really does work i think luigi looks <laughs> Personally, I think Luigi is the better looking of the Mario Brothers. Bowser looks phenomenal. Peach looks phenomenal. Toad just looks like Toad. I like that they didn't really change his design. You can't really get any better than that. I think Donkey Kong was probably the most drastic change design-wise, and that took a little getting used to for me because he really looked like an Illumination character, but that wasn't that wasn't a bad thing, like I said. And like I said before, I want to talk about the music. The music, along with the visuals, were, was just phenomenal. Either the composer or like one of like the director or head of Illumination. I don't know who said this, but I think about like 130 songs total were um, referenced, like from the Mario universe. Every once in a while, you heard music from the first game, then you heard it from like a Paper Mario game, and then there was a Galaxy song and even Cascade Kingdom from Super Mario Odyssey. They had a lot of really, really small bits and pieces of musical cues and melodies from different games in the series, and I really, really liked it. They even had Donkey Kong music as well. I will talk about the one gripe that I had with the music overall, and it's a very small thing, but I'll talk about that a little later. The last thing that I thought was really good was the voice acting. I think everybody did a phenomenal job. I think Chris Pratt and Jack Black well, Jack Black nailed it. Chris Pratt almost nailed it. I think Chris Pratt did the best job that he could do with this movie, and it's 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 pretty it's pretty good. It's very good, I would say. I I was expecting Mario to sound like you know Star Lord or Emmett, you know, very basic Chris Pratt, but he did put a voice on. He put a Brooklyn accent on. He kind of. I think he like maybe made his voice a little higher, which was very, very nice. Charlie Day sounded like Luigi. He didn't do his like normal voice that he always does, which was nice. He actually did a voice somewhat. Seth Rogen was just Seth Rogen. We all knew that was going to happen. And Anya Taylor-Joy, I don't really know much about her, but I think she did a good job. I can't, I don't know if that's just how she sounds. I mean, I know she put on an American accent, I guess. And then Keegan-Michael Key was honestly a really good pick for Toad. I was not expecting him to pull off Toad so well, and I think the best part about both Mario and Toad was that they weren't annoying. They weren't super annoying like they are. They would have been if, say, Charles Martinet played Mario the entire time, or if the original Toad actor played Toad the whole time. Because Toad's voice is really like loud and gravelly and annoying, and Mario's voice is just really high pitched and annoying for long periods of time. They sound like the characters, and that's perfect. I also did like that Chris Pratt did a more traditional Mario um, voice at the very beginning of the movie in their commercial. Their commercial was great. They, I think they they used the original TV show like theme song. You know, you got Mario using his high pitched, more Italian accent similar to Charles Martinet, but it's also not the same, but it was still good. And you had like very, very small roles, like the penguin, you had, well, not the Batman penguin, but the, the King penguin, then you had like Kamek, you had Cranky Kong, and then obviously Charles Martinet. Just all around the voice acting was phenomenal. I was never like taken out of, the, well, I can't really say that. There were, there was only like one or two times I was taken out of it. And that's really just when Bowser gets all timid and shy or like embarrassed. He kind of just does a Jack Black voice. Jack Black just kind of speaks, which it, it wasn't really off putting. It was kind of funny. I won't lie. Bowser was by far the best character in the movie. He was funny. He was menacing. His song was phenomenal. Props to Jack Black for singing a, making and singing a song for the movie. It went hard as hell. It's still stuck in my head as of recording this. Jack Black did an amazing job adding a charm to the character make, while still making him a little a little scary. And then all like the sound effects too. Every once in a while you'd hear a coin sound effect or Bowser would like grunt or scream and it was like straight from the games. There's a lot of care put into like every aspect of the film and I can appreciate that. As a longtime Mario fan, I've been playing since the Wii and the first memory I have of any game is Mario Galaxy. So it was also nice to hear Mario Galaxy stuff. Now the things I didn't like had like basically nothing to do with the IP or the characters or the Easter eggs. It really just came down to like the story and the pacing uh, because the story is really, it's pretty straightforward. It's pretty basic. I wouldn't say it's anything crazy, but it's, it's Super Mario. Uh, it's not going to be a crazy like Inception level Christopher Nolan drama high stakes movie. It's Mario, you know, Princess Peach is going to 
you know, get captured at some point. Luigi's captured as well. Mario gotta save him from Bowser, who has a power star. That's like the whole movie. It doesn't really do anything to affect the movie in a bad way. It's I still have a really good, I still had a really good time with it. And I wouldn't really say that's a bad thing. I'd say that's more of an in-between good and bad. It's just like, I have an, a neutral stance on that. I don't really have any strong opinions on that. It's just like, you know, I, I've seen that flying around with the really critical reception as the story. And it's like, if you're going to a Mario movie for a crazy story, you're going to be disappointed no matter what. And the, I think the pacing of the movie was the only real issue I had with it, mainly because there were quite a few parts in the movie where stuff just happened to move the plot along like really fast. There were three different plot lines at one point. You had Bowser in his ship, Luigi in the Darklands, and Mario at the Mushroom Kingdom. There was a short period of time where those three plot lines kept like switching from one to another, probably within like You'd have like 30 seconds with Luigi, then it'd cut to a minute with Mario and Princess Peach to like 45 seconds with Bowser, back to Mario, then to Luigi again, all within a span of like 10 minutes. It, it was a bit jarring because there was a lot going on. It didn't really do too much to affect the movie, but it was just some small things here and there. And then there was a really, really big plot jump from Mario getting trained to like immediately being at the Kong's kingdom which it wasn't even that bad. It was just like, I kind of wanted more of the exploration stuff, mainly because I wanted to see more locations, but we did see some nice locations like Bob on Battlefield, the desert from Odyssey. We saw Yoshi's Island, got the little jingle in there too, whatever the, whenever the song was playing at that point. But yeah, the pacing, it had some problems, but it didn't take me out of it. I still enjoyed the film for what it was and I want to see it a third time. So, I mean, that, I feel like that's pretty telling. And I feel like the last really, really small thing for me really just comes down to some of the music choices and it has nothing to do with the actual orchestrated pieces that were made. It has to do with the licensed music. I think two of them worked really well. I think the training montage cover of that song was pretty good. Kind of sounded like something out of Mario Sunshine. If you've played it, you know what I'm talking about. So that was kind of nice. The cover was nice. And the end, right before the credits, that song was, uh, it's just a good song. It didn't really take me out of it. It was a nice little song to end the movie with. But the introduction to the Kong Kingdom with the drive, where the, the white Kong puts them in his car and starts driving them around. Take On Me, not a bad song, don't get me wrong. I heard the song that was originally supposed to go in there um, after, after the fact. I have listened to the entire soundtrack at this point. And there was a very, very nice rendition of the title theme that appeared like a couple times during the drive and it was, it was just kind of disappointing because you don't really have a lot of Donkey Kong music in the film. The original song I thought was phenomenal, and I think Take On Me was also just a little out of place. It just kind of shows up for no reason, and I don't really think the driving scene was the perfect place to put it. I feel that I feel like that was Illumination's call. It, it didn't seem like that was Nintendo's call, because I don't think Nintendo would have wanted the licensed songs um, there. They might have, but like, not there. I kinda wish they went with the original track that's all I'm not gonna play it but i highly recommend listening to i think it's called driving me bananas in the playlist it's really really good uh, like i said i give the movie an 8.5 9 out of 10 overall like if we're gonna mix like casual viewers and mario fans i'd say it's about an 85 90 uh, for me personally, it was definitely a 95 to 100. But I'd give it a 95 simply because of like the small things here and there that were just like, okay, I, I kind of wish that was a little different. But overall, fun, really fun movie. Really, really, really fun movie. I would highly recommend that you watch it if you have been watching to this point and still haven't seen the movie, just go see it. And if you've seen it already, go see it again. What's the harm in doing that? Now, I just kind of want to talk about some of the critic critical reception, which has been like pretty funny. One of the ones that I saw was, um, it was a li literal critic review on Rotten Tomatoes. Uh, and they said some, uh, something along, actually, let me pull it up. Later. Okay, you know, I'm not gonna go searching for this. Long story short, uh, they basically said some, some really dumb things, and it, the consensus from this person was, this is Nintendo, uh, th not Nintendo's, because this would technically be Nintendo's worst movie, because it's their own first. They said that this was Illumination's first bad movie. So, right off the bat, you can tell they haven't seen Hop, they haven't seen Sing 2, which was probably worse. They haven't seen the original Minions. They haven't seen uh, Despicable Me 3. Uh, I could go on. They haven't seen the Lorax. Um, they, I, the list could go on, honestly. Illumination has a lot of stinkers in their catalog. To say that this is anywhere close to even like the bottom half of the list is like not even true. I would put this movie 
either alongside or above Despicable Me. I think Despicable Me up to today was their best film. I would say Mario either is alongside it or is above it in terms of quality and enjoyment. And I, I think the funniest thing to come out of this movie is the so-called woke agenda, uh, woke agendas plural that people believe this movie is expressing. Now, the, I think the funniest ones that I've seen are Peach being a girl boss, which is a terrible word. It's a stupid word, and I hate it. Uh, Bowser being a simp. And um, I don't really know if this was a joke or not, but peep did. I do think some people did believe that this was true. The, the Rainbow Road gay propaganda shit that was coming out. Uh, at the very beginning. I think I would assume that originally that post started as a joke, but then some people took it seriously. I want to talk about the peach stuff. Um, so anybody who believes that there is this sexist agenda thing that's going on, they haven't played a Mario game either ever or since the very first game. Because Peach has been actually, Peach has been doing like actual stuff in the game since the second one. Even though the second game was a reskin, she was still doing stuff since then. She was a playable character. So already, out the window, you kinda dumb, buddy. Uh, Bowser being a simp, he's been a simp the entire time. He's been a simp for the, like, the, 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 the entirety of the series. He has been kidnapping Princess Peach to either just to have her be there or just marry her. A very easy way to tell that is the fact that, you know, he never actually destroys the Mushroom Kingdom. Every time you get to, like, World 1-1 in the new games, you can see the castle in the background. It is nowhere close to decimated. It is in pristine condition. So if Bowser was just trying to be an evil guy, he would have destroyed the Mushroom Kingdom from, like, day one. Not, he He's always been in love, I guess, with the Princess Peach. So the concept of that he is a simp, well, the word simp is a newer thing. So I guess you could call him that. But that's been a thing since the beginning. And I think the funny, another really, really funny thing is there's this woman, no hate towards her, but she does not understand like anything when it comes to movies. Uh, you probably know who I'm talking about. Grace Randolph. Okay, that's who that is. Uh, she has had some real stinkers. S she's had some real stinky opinions. Like a couple of her opinions were Mario and Luigi's relationship was forced. Um... Why was Mario a cat? Is that a furry thing? And the funniest one that I've seen so far is Bowser is engaging in stalker behavior. That has got to be like one of my favorite takes ever. Um, so uh, her take was along the lines of... In today's marketplace post me too? To hear Bowser declare that he's going to ask Princess Peach to marry him, which apparently isn't a spoiler because I looked it up and it happens in the games all the time. But he's like, I'm gonna ask Princess Peach to marry me. And like his little uh, sycophant sorcerer is like, what if she doesn't want to? And he's like, then I'll destroy her kingdom and kill everyone she knows. And you're like, wow, that's stalker behavior. And oh, I would say, brother, kinda makes not this guy for children, So I feel like we've gotten to a point somehow that in today's world, villains, villains, bad people can only do socially acceptable things we saw the same exact thing when it came to uh, i don't know that the, the very very loud person on uh tiktok we've gotten to a point where it's bad for villains to do socially unacceptable things like call a child a a um, a cunt i thought that was pretty stupid so that that's basically along the lines of this so you're worried about bowser engaging in stalker behavior and not you know kid He's a villain. He's a bad guy. He's deranged. He's not gonna do the socially acceptable thing. I, I think, I just think that's really stupid that some people do believe that the villains have to stay within the boundaries of what is and what is not socially or lawfully acceptable. I think that's stupid. That's just a stupid take. Um, moving on. What was I? I was gonna talk about one other thing. Oh yeah, and then just the Rainbow Road gay stuff was kind of dumb. The movie has no agenda. It was just a fun movie for families to go see and enjoy, and I enjoyed it thoroughly. Again, go see it. It's in theaters as of right now. If you want to see this one, see it in theaters. It's a treat to see in theaters. It's a treat to just see. I can't wait to watch this whenever it's on like Netflix or wherever it's gonna end up. Cause I'm gonna watch this movie quite a lot. Cause there's still a lot of things that I've never, I haven't caught. Yeah, uh, let me know if you wanna see more film and TV show videos. I know I've probably said that before cause I've, I've done a Minions video and I've done a like Stranger Things rant. Yeah, just let me know. And um, I'll see you guys in the next one. Like, subscribe, comment, do whatever. Just don't fight me. For like the five people who are gonna see this, don't fight me. No thanks. Good night.